Do you have an under five plus? Well, today's video is gonna cover an inevitable repair, but a nice little upgrade you can add to your machine when the time comes. We're talking about stepper motors and extruders. It's in today's video, so come along for the ride. All right, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dad, and I am glad to be back from vacation. Glad to be back where it's warm, and glad to be sharing this video with you guys today. How busy I've been. Etsy sales and, and, and side orders and things like that. And any of you who do that know that, that you know, it comes in waves. Right before Halloween, had a ton of orders, and this is why this video is being put up today. So basically, I'm referring to my Ender 5 Plus today. So I haven't had the machine that long. Had a ton of orders come in, big orders. Multiple, multiple, multiple Dr. Doom, and so it's take about two days to print. Metro cops, just all kinds of big, big orders. This thing has been a workhorse for sure. I beat the snot out of this thing in the last three months. But right before I was getting ready to leave, uh, I started printing my uh, my daughter's mask, which I did a post on it. It was the uh, Vanny from Five Nights at Freddy. I get everything loaded in my under five plus. It starts printing and then it, it almost looks like the bed's unleveling, like it's too far from the, from the glass plate. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, that's weird. So I go ahead and re-level the bed. And then it does it again and it does it again. And I'm like, did I just lose my mind and forget how to level a bed? So I go through and check everything and I'm, I'm just not understanding what's going on. I, I took my Bowden tube and I took that all apart, you know, dissected the hot end, replaced the nozzle, snipped the Bowden, made sure heat creep wasn't happening, everything. And turns out the last thing that I checked, it was actually my stepper motor gear that had worn out. So check that out, man. That's from like three months of use. So obviously a lot of you guys uh, seen my Ender 5 Plus setup video and I only had it for like maybe like three months or something set up and running. Obviously it just really worked it hard, but this is the gear. This is the stepper motor and the gear that pushes that through. It just wore that this brass gear completely out. It is a very common problem with the Ender 5 Plus. Obviously the Ender 5 Plus is new to me, so I didn't realize this happens this quick. There's no way that this piece comes off, so you just have to replace the whole thing. So it's something that I've been told is absolutely inevitable that happens with the Ender 5 Plus. So I feel like this video will be pretty useful. It's such an easy fix that you don't want to sit there and you know, pay someone to do it or sit there and return a printer. I mean, that'd be crazy to do, but you never know. Some people are intimidated by replacing parts and things like that. So hopefully this video helps you. So what we got coming up here is basically just a bunch of slides and everything on how to replace uh, the stepper motor and the extruder housing for it. Nice thing about this is it's an absolute upgrade uh, to the printer. You know, a lot of times those plastic extruder arms, they crack and they just get worn out. It's one less thing you have to worry about uh, breaking. Uh, one less thing you have to worry about like, hey, I'm getting under extrusion. Why is this happening? Well, that's one thing you can just kind of check off the list. So not only was this in my case a required repair, but it's a nice little upgrade in the same sense. Uh, why don't we get into the uh, replacement and repair process of the video and I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. All right, so replacing the uh, stepper motor here and the extruder arm and the housing, the first thing we want to do is take the factory Bowden tube and the fitment off. So just grab one of your Creality wrenches and loosen it. It's the smaller head uh, side of the wrench. Just loosen that, get that out of the way. The next thing we want to do is start getting some of these bolts off. So I always like to start with the uh, tensioner on the extruder arm part. Uh, just kind of loosen that, get that off out of the way. It's one of the more medium size Allen keys. I'm not sure the exact size, but if you've got 3D printers, you should have these lying around so just kind of loosen that get that off be wary of the spring it might go flying if it does it's not that big of a deal because the new piece we're putting on is going to have a spring along with it uh, here's just a look there's a, a small little housing and then the spring just use that as a reference always take any parts off and put them off to the side uh, next we want to remove the uh, top bolts there uh, again they're a smaller bolt uh, just reference your creality allen keys or just general allen keys will work just fine uh, but I like to loosen the top ones here first, get those off and out of the way. All right, and once those top two uh, Allen screws are off, you can move down to the extruder arm screw. And it's a little bit larger of an Allen key. Uh, again, all these keys do come with the Creality printers. I'm not sure the exact size, but if you have 3D printers or you're just a guy with tools, you should be in, in, in good shape. Uh, but just go ahead and take that extruder arm off. And again, if you've never done this, if this is your first time, it's good to keep these pieces around for a reference so you can kind of see you got the one bolt in the arm and then the bearing with the other bolt or screw uh, holding in place there uh, so all we have left is the plastic housing and the actual stepper motor it's held in by one more uh, little allen 
screw and make sure to support the stepper motor from the back because uh, if you don't it's it's going to fall to the ground i guess it's kind of irrelevant in this video because we're replacing it but if you're just replacing the housing here uh, make sure you support that stepper motor no guarantees it's not going to break if uh if it falls to the ground so there you can see the plastic housing that's coming right off and now we're going to get into replacing this stepper motor You can see the, uh, the the damage here and why I was having under extrusion, you know, these brass uh, gears, they, they just wear out over time. A lot of people recommend the all metal ones, but this piece will not come off. So you have to actually replace the whole stepper motor with a new stepper motor. So the factory stepper motor was perfectly fine, but that piece you cannot get off. So what you have to do is go in your little uh, bag of tricks here with your all metal kit and you're gonna take your stepper motor and there's a new uh, brass fitting on there and you basically just tighten the top two little Allen keys. It's a very small Allen key, but you wanna go ahead and get those nice and tight, get those in place, and then you're gonna grab, we're just gonna do the same thing just all in reverse. We're gonna grab our, our metal housing and we're gonna line that up and just work in reverse order here. Little tip here, make sure that your plug for your stepper motor is facing towards your harness, not away. We don't want to put any additional stress on the harness or the plug or anything like that. That could lead to problems down the road. But as I stated, you're just going to work in reverse order. Uh, so we are going to start with that smaller uh, Allen screw there, put that in place. Then we're going to move on to the extruder arm. So we're going to put that little bearing pulley on there and just make sure it's nice and tight and snug. Uh, we are then going to get it in place, uh, same place where we took that screw out. Very important though, the all metal, uh, there's a little notch in the plastic one that holds the spring in place. The metal one does not have it, so make sure you put one of these supplied screws in place just to support the spring when you're putting it in place. I like to leave it a little bit loose just so I can get that screw on and then put that spring uh, in place. So just leave yourself a little bit of playroom, that way you can kind of wiggle that screw on, get it uh, nice and tight and in place, not too tight. Uh, we'll button everything up at the end, make sure everything's nice and tight. Uh, very important here, we wanna put the two top screws in that are holding the top part of the metal housing in place because if we put the screw in where the that holds the spring in, the tensioner, you wouldn't be able to uh, tighten those top ones. So uh, do the top two screws holding the housing in, then just kind of firmly snug up that top uh, extruder tensioner spring. Uh, just get that nice and place and tighten again there. I'm just kind of going through. Again, buttoning everything up. We want things tight, but not too tight. Don't crank on it where you're going to strip the screw or anything like that. Uh, just get things to where uh, they're in, in, I guess, working order, you could say. Uh, the factory fitment for the Bowden tube is not going to work, so we're actually going to re remove that. And all these pieces that I'm putting in this all comes with the kit. The link will be in the description. So uh, it's basically just a compression fitting. So you're just going to you know, push that top clear gray plug and just pull down on it. Uh, when you're putting it on, just push it and just kind of slide the Bowden tube in. It goes in pretty easy. You don't want to have it sticking out too far. Uh, you just kind of want it flush, you know, just maybe... I don't know, a centimeter or two behind where the uh, threaded part of the fitment is. Uh, so get that in place there. Put the blue clip, uh, the retaining clip that holds it in place firmly on the Bowden tube and then just kind of go ahead and tighten it up. Uh, fingers, wrenches, sometimes you gotta do a little bit of both to get it on there, but again, just make sure it's firm and snug. Don't over tighten it and you should be good to go. So lastly, what we wanna do is make sure that the stepper motor is working properly, that everything's been installed sufficiently on the extruder part and everything. Just make sure it's it's working. We don't want it too tight, we don't want it too loose. So go ahead, preheat your machine to the proper temperature, grab some filament, uh, load it up, and what we're gonna do is actually grab a, a ruler or a micrometer or something and, and measure a certain part and tell the printer to do that certain part. So what I'm doing is 50 millimeters, and what you want to do is mark it on the filament, do it a little bit below the filament runout sensor, and then just kind of push it up. So I'm telling it to extrude 50 millimeters, and my printer is calibrated, E steps flow, everything's good on this. So just make two marks and push it right up to the filament runout sensor. And then what we want to do is go to the control board and we want to set the temperature. Now the Ender 5 Plus automatically goes to 230 to feed filament, so it's gonna preheat up to 230. But then what we wanna do is we wanna go to settings, we wanna to go to refuel, and then you wanna hit the feed button. So type in 50, hit okay, and then hit feed. So what this is doing is uh, it, the machine is being told to extrude out 50 millimeters. Now, 
if everything's been installed properly, if your extruder arm is, you know, not too loose, not too tight, just perfect where it needs to be and the stepper motor is working properly, what it's going to do is it's going to extrude exactly 50 millimeters of filament. So go ahead and watch this. If you see it kind of flowing out like this, you know you're in good shape, you know that it's not too tight, it's not too loose. Uh, and then reference back to those points that you made with the uh, with your micrometer and with your Sharpie. And you can see right here, probably should have used a black Sharpie, but you can see right where that gold mark is. So it extracted 50 millimeters perfectly and we know we are good to go. So of course you won't really know if it actually works until you actually do a print. So here you can see uh, this is about 20 hours in. Uh, it's finishing up the uh, top dome on the Punisher War Machine helmet. I already finished up the faceplate, uh, came out absolutely great. So I'm happy to say that uh, this part replacement, this upgrade uh, was a success. Pretty easy process guys, something you're more than likely going to come across. So hopefully this video helps you have it uh, like I said it's not the hardest uh, replacement repair upgrade to do you know it was something where there was just not there's nothing else I had to do I had to replace it I was kind of shocked because you know knock on wood I haven't really had to do this with my CR10 V2 my CR10 mini um, my CR6 SE like none of those have needed this part replaced that quick. I will say with talking with a couple veterans in the industry that they recommend instead of doing the brass, there's the steel. I would have done that upgrade. It's just, I already had these parts ordered. I prepare for the worst. Like, things that I know are going to break and I have, I order them, you know, multiple of them to have them just in case. I like to kind of have my zombie apocalypse stash of 3D printer parts ready. So it's a tip for you. If you have the extra cash, just order extra parts just so you have them. It allows you to troubleshoot and find out really what's wrong with the printer. Of course, we have the Discord, so don't be afraid to join that. All right, the Discord we have going on, a great group of guys. You know, everyone's there to help each other. Uh, my one subscriber is, uh, he's building an R2-D2, which is absolutely insane. Uh, we've got Crashworks on there. Uh, you know, we j just multiple people. Uh, Chris Kersey from Kersey Fabrications on there. Just so many great guys just help each other out. So, uh, you know, if, you guys ever have questions and I don't have the answers or I'm not replying, don't be afraid to join the Discord um, because you know we're all, we're all here to help each other. We all have one common goal and uh, that's really just the goal of this channel too is to help you guys grow, become better 3D printers or better craftsmen, whatever it is. And hopefully that video delivered it for you today. If you are a subscriber to the channel, thank you so much. Uh, I do have to do that Bondo Filler Primer giveaway. Uh, I do have a video, sneak peek. I'm actually wrapping up my filler primer test video. So what I'm doing is I'm testing five different types of filler primer. You guys are gonna absolutely love that video and I'm going to be doing the giveaway for that. So I have not forgotten about the subscriber giveaway. Uh, of course, I'm gonna have more. We got some cool stuff coming up for the holidays, guys. So make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you liked the video or you found it helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or any comments or input, go ahead and leave me a comment. I always appreciate your guys' feedback. If you have any comment on any video, you know, past, present, or future, go ahead and drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Give me your insight. I'm done, guys. Uh, I'm going to be working on editing some more of the videos. Be on the lookout. Click that subscribe button. If you are subscribed, click that notification bell so you know when the next video is out. And until then, DW out. Later.